Well, we are continuing to watch stocks higher here. That's not the case in China this morning. A major sell-off there overnight as the major cities bring back harsh lockdown measures to try and combat a COVID outbreak. Eunice Yoon joins us live from Beijing. And, and, and Eunice, this is a situation where the cases are about as high as we've seen since the original lockdown in March of 2020. Yeah, that's right. Um, so far this year, there were 9,000 cases. So China uh, reported more uh, this year than they have for the entire year of 2021. Now, the Hong Kong market actually closed at its lowest point in six years, and that's because of more makeshift testing centers uh, that have been popping up all over the country. Uh, the city of Shenzhen is uh, in partial lockdown. Seventeen and a half million people are now being tested for the third time. The city also had ordered all non-essential businesses to suspend operations for a week. Uh, public transportation has been cut and travel restricted. Now, Apple suppliers Foxconn and Unimicron have said that they have activated backup plans in order to try to mitigate some of the potential disruption to their production. Uh, Unimicron is also supplier for Intel. Uh, China is fighting uh, what's now becoming its biggest outbreak of COVID-19 since the pandemic. Other cities are clamping down. For example, Shanghai has shut schools. It's rumored to be div diverting international flights. Later this week, a 9 million residents for Chongchun, which is where a Toyota has a JV, um, have said that they um, have ordered the, the residents, uh, they, they could only uh, leave their homes to get groceries every other day. Uh, Dongguan in the south has halted bus and subway services, also a uh, dine-in. And uh, Beijing has uh, canceled uh, large events and is now urging residents not to travel. Now, a Shanghai epidemiologist uh, told local reporters today that the vast majority of the cases are stealth Omicron. And he said that China could see an exponential rise in these cases. So the fact that we are seeing this surge in cases is sure to have economic implications. In fact, some of the economists over at Nomura said that they're concerned about the impact on consumer spending. And ANZ Bank said that the economic cost could be 0.8 percent. So a lot of people now concerned about uh, not only the disruption here to the economy, to the Chinese economy, but also to the entire supply chain. Guys? Eunice, I, I think the questions become, okay, at this point they say lockdowns in those cities until March 20th. Um, that's a week, one week to see what happens. How are people reacting in places like Beijing? Uh, you've been through these routines before. Are, are people stocking up on supplies on the chance that they wake up some morning and find out they can't leave their apartment building either? Uh, yes. <laughs> uh, there has, I mean, it's not as though there's uh, lots of hoarding as there is, say, for example, in Hong Kong. But people here are watching uh, what's going on in other cities, uh, such as Hong Kong, where uh, there has been an Omicron surge and that's gotten out of control, where uh, there weren't a lot of, um, uh, you know, there wasn't a whole lot of stuff in the store shelves. So, so people are much more concerned about that here. But I think not only are people worried about catching Omicron and the fact that um, they're worried about potentially um, not having the, the right vaccinations to be able to ward off Omicron. But, but they're also concerned about being locked down and being, uh, you know, holed up in, in a, a building for several days, if not longer. So, so there are a lot of people who are very nervous over here.